I appreciate you coming on, honestly. Um, I was asking some mutual friends. I said, I need some funny people. I need some good people on, on my show. Um, in the times we're living, it's all negative out there. I need some comedians. And they said, oh, we, we, know, we know someone. And uh, uh, yours was a name they mentioned, Esther. So uh, uh, thanks for coming on. I know you're busy. No, you're welcome. And, so, and I know you've got kids. So I'm eating my breakfast. Go for it. It's, no, a, it's, it's a very relaxed My show. kids are with their granddad for this ah. hour. So yeah, we're all right for an hour. Good, good. <laughs> and uh, I, I know you're, you're kind of struggling, balancing your work with your kids. I've got kids and I know how that works. And uh I recently saw your video about you was planning to go to Edinburgh um, and uh, you're trying to make a little video and your phone gets knocked by one of your kids and <laughs> that, yeah. it, it hits home. It really hits home. So Esther, look, thanks for coming on and for no, anyone that's listening and watching, cause it'll be on YouTube as well. Just okay. be in a few sentences, uh, kind of what you do. <laughs> What do, do I do? Help? Well, do you... I mean, I guess like <laughs> comedian. So, I mean, yeah, I'm a comedian, writer, uh, but it's a bit of a weird time to even define that really because obviously all the work's just gone, like um, yeah. starting to trickle back a little bit here and there. But it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely a weird time. But normally pre-lockdown, uh, before lockdown, BL, uh, I would have been, yeah, stand-up comic. I would have been a club comic. That was yeah. my main job. Yeah. So, so none of the clubs are open at the moment, right? There's, there's nothing at the moment out there, and it's, it's just a tough time. There's, there's some outdoor comedy gigs. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing a couple of those, but yeah, there's nothing. I don't. I, I think some of the clubs are starting to test run gigs, but obviously it'll be a while before they're getting into the spin of like working yeah a lot more and I think people are just generally quite nervous I mean loads of people haven't even gone on transport and stuff so no. to expect them to sit in a comedy club is going to be a bit risky yeah so we'll see what happens yeah and to try and make them laugh as well um yeah you're doing, you're doing these outdoor gigs what are you what are you doing you out in a park or something and uh everyone's just spread out I've got no idea because I haven't done one yet so I'm doing I'm doing them next week my first batch will be next week so I've got no idea what yeah. it'll be like. Um, I've done that. I mean, outdoor gigs, outdoor is never the best environment for stand up anyway, but you know, people are yeah. going to do what they, what they need to do just to kind of keep things going. Yeah. The kind of the club atmosphere, the close proximity, people sit with each other and, you know, you're shoulder to shoulder with the person next to you and you're right near the, uh, the comedian on stage, not on the front, uh, near the stage because that's where you get called out don't you if you get picked on um, um, but and I think being out I've seen Dave Chappelle I saw his comedy special um, obviously he's the Dave Chappelle and you know people will turn up wherever he is in the middle of a field um, yeah but even that seems quite odd because he's sort of wandering around people are sort of spread out um, and I've got you yeah know, you feed off it's an, it's an environment where you feed off the people around you like you know if you're sat by yourself watching stand up at home let's say you're not you don't tend to sit there and kind of balk out loud you're not you know you're, you're chuckling to yourself but if you're in a comedy club and you're sat with your partner or your mates or whatever and you've got a glass of wine in hand then you're more likely to laugh out loud and have you know a real kind of like belly laugh so it's it's a different environment you know comedy yeah. The arts in general, you know, it's all about kind of people coming together and appreciating something, whether it's theatre or comedy or dance. But sadly, comedy is not considered one of the arts. No. Uh, and it, it's 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 such a terrible thing, because I think if if anything in these times, comedy is um, is the best thing, because I always think comedians look at life in a slightly uh a skew way you know they, they kind of see the funny elements in society and, and and that's what we need right now and you're right i think the, the government and um they kind of put arts and comedy to the side we don't really need them you know but we do i think that's kind of the glue 
which our society works. You know, we like to congregate together. We like to enjoy concerts. Uh, we like to enjoy comedy together, you know, and it's a tough time. I've, I know we've got a mutual friends, old Jilla, and she spoke about the same thing as well. She was worried about, she goes, I don't really know what's happening. You know, her, her yeah. you know, it's, it's a troubling time for everyone. Um, I know that the government's looking into putting money into theatre, um, but like you said, is is comedy like on the lowest rung, and they're not even really considering it? Yeah, I think it's kind of it's it's quite snobby, but I think because it's kind of comedy clubs and stuff are considered, you know, something that the upper classes don't really go to. So it's always kind of been like on the low end. It's always been part of you know going out on a Friday night and, and being kind of something which is considered quite you know not really elitist so mm. to be honest I, I think that's kind of part of it um but the fact is is that it's a massive part of the arts industry I mean if you look at things like Edinburgh Festival and you know all the kind of all the different kind of comedy venues and how much they do actually provide the economy and and what they're providing to the local area mm. and, and it does make a difference you know the moment a town or a city has like a decent comedy venue or theatre or whatever, it makes a difference to the town. It makes a difference to what people have access to. Um, so it is an essential part. And it's part of, you know, what being British is. You know, the comedy scene is a big part of British life. So it's quite, it, is, it is frustrating when it's not referred to as, as an art form. And also we work... The same way performers do you know we've got to get up on stage we've got to know what we're going to say we've got to you know put work into it we've got to make sure that we've got that kind of same attitude that we're outperforming so it's yeah it is annoying when we're not considered um to be the same as somebody who's working say on a on a show or something yeah it's, it's kind of one of the purest art forms i would think i mean i'm not a stand-up comedian uh, or anything like that but just to stand up there with a microphone front of an audience and literally you're either going to make them laugh or you're not right and that's kind of yeah that's you're, what you're, you're going to make them laugh or you're going to destroy your soul <laughs> and there is nothing more soul destroying than performing to total and utter silence and you're like wow kill me now and you just have to keep on going um, and it happens it happens to absolutely everyone anyone who says they haven't died to death on stage is an absolute liar so uh, we've, it's happened to us all and yeah it's really isolating and it's so funny because I was in Edinburgh with another comedian and he just was like oh do you know what next year I'm going when I come back next year I'm just going to do a play yeah. and I was like what do you mean you're going to do a play he went because he just don't matter does he you just got to stand on stage and say your words it don't matter and I was like there are a million actors in this city right now who would kill you if they heard you yeah. say that but it's so funny that in a comedic sense because we're working so hard for the laughs that the thought of not having to get a laugh is like oh that's just a holiday that's yeah. so much <laughs> just to stand up obviously it's not yeah just stand up and do a monologue about yeah something. just stand yeah. tall it's just just going to do a play. It's easier. Yeah. And it's like, no, it doesn't work like that. I mean, that is how blinkered comedians are. It's like, all I'm doing is trying to get a laugh. Yeah. Um, but have you, have you yourself, have you ever um, tanked on stage and then you just thought, I'm just going to give this up, you know? Um, yes. Yes. I did. Um, what's one of my worst ones? I'm trying to think. I don't, I haven't really been heckled. Like I've had um, I've had a couple of like I've had a couple of really uncomfortable um, instances at gigs where stuff's been said to me by people just before I've gone on and or when I've come off, um, but that but then they've just kind of remained. I had <laughs> I talked about this in my show last year. I did one gig and before I went on, there was just a massive group of really racist blokes and they and the MC was um, a young black guy. And he was managing it really well. Um, but they just would not like, they were like, no, we're not racist. My mate's black. But they just would not stop. And then another comedian went on who was Jewish and just went, do you know what? F a lot of you. I'm not going to deal with this. So just walked off. And then I had to go on. And um, I don't know whether it's because I was a woman, but they then decided they weren't going to heckle me but just sit there in total silence and just look like I was the worst thing that had ever happened. 
it was just awful because then there was a woman who was sat in the front row who kept getting really annoyed at these racist guys. But when I came on, she felt that she had to give me some kind of solidarity. So throughout my set, she kept on going, keep going, keep going. And I was like, oh my God, this is, it's literally like you're <laughs> standing up doing your school play and you're, you're, you know, you've wet yourself yeah. and it's completely shit. And your mum's in the front row like, okay. you do, you do really well, sweetheart. Um, and then when the I puddle. left, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry, it's fine. I'm Everyone misses up. themselves. Um, and then when I left, I had been basically that one of their biggest issue, I think, was the fact that I was talking about my family, but I'm an Arab. And um, as I left, um, I was walking, I had to walk past them, and I was by myself. And one of them just went, even though you're an Arab, I'd still fuck you. <laughs> And I remember just going into a shop and going, I feel really scared, really weirded out. And I had to do the same club the next night, but I made my, I made my um, dad babysit and I made my husband come with me. I was like, yeah. I'm not going back there on my no, own. No, no. Um, and went back the next night and it was just a lovely, lovely night. Yeah. Um, do you think, it was do you just think that, down to those people. Do you think that guy was actually thinking, I'm paying her a compliment here? <laughs> I think they genuinely, I think, to be honest with you, a lot of people have got such a naive image of what an Arab is that when you talk about being Arab, they're just like, oh, because I've had lots of things said. I've, I've had it said once that um, I didn't know that I was really surprised when you started talking about being Arab because you just look normal. <laughs> um, you, do, you do, for people nice. listening, you do look normal, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what a compliment. Yeah. It is. You, that's a hard one to say if someone just goes you look normal it's like I mean normal is like your basic level isn't yeah. it like when you get up in the morning normal is like what you're kind of like when the postman's knocking with a delivery and you're still in your pajamas and your hair's everywhere and you're kind of like oh I just need to like smooth my hair down yeah, yeah. and look normal if I there can just look normal <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming I can get away with just opening the door looking normal is not what I want when I've made an effort and I'm on stage like yeah. that, that's not what you want you, want, you don't want someone I mean yeah you know, you're married how would your wife feel if you you're getting ready to go out and you're like yeah you look normal you look yeah normal. it's fine no yeah, one's gonna no, think no, you, you don't know. say that you don't say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes I <don't> know <laughs> that'll be in my mind you don't look a freak no, normally but, you look a freak what did he think now you look, normal. look like uh, abnormal did you like sort of an eye up here or something and mm. you just um, yeah but I think um, that's pre- people's uh, preconceptions and prejudices. So as an Arab, they would think, well, I don't know what they would think you are. But um, or, And even well, doing comedy. Difficult. I think it's difficult with me because I'm very much both. So, I'm, so my mum is a Geordie, born and bred, so I'm half Arab. And my dad's Lebanese. But I grew up half in Lebanon, half here. I've got Lebanese nationality. So I very much see myself as a British Arab, I very much see myself as half and half. So I talk about, and I've, you know, I've spent so long in Lebanon and and with my Lebanese family and with my Lebanese side that I, I talk about it because it's my family. I'm not up there to go, this is the statement that I make, but I'm very much, and I've always called myself an Arab and a lot of Lebanese won't, they'll call themselves Lebanese rather than Arabs. But, you know, I, I very much see myself as a British Arab and, uh, but it is, it is preconception. Um, also having an Essex accent. Yeah, all these things. They're all just yeah. like, what are you? What yeah. is this? Yeah. What's going on here? Just confusing people, <laughs> Esther. You need to have well, like a T-shirt it's maybe. Mental. Maybe you have a T-shirt and you just have your bullet points. And, yeah. Uh, just clear it That'd up as good. you walk on stage. And but, so, I mean, the preconceptions of people is... I mean, even if you, you don't have to go too far back thinking about women doing stand up. <laughs> well, you get a lot of women. It's never men. It's always women that come up and go, I don't normally like a female comedian. Well, other women would say. That. Oh, yeah. It's never men. Men do this thing of like when you go on stage, quite a lot of like men will go, will fold their arms and do a. Let's see. Right. right let, let's see what she's got. But they don't ever say anything rude. But when you, the women, and it tends to be like, you know, our parents' generation, women will come up and go, oh, I don't normally like a female comedian, but you're all right. You were normal. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they'll come up and, and they'll and they'll say, oh, I don't I don't really like female comedians because they just slag off men. And I'm like, did you not just hear what I've been doing for like the last 20 minutes on stage? Um, I did I did um, uh, Arabs v Asian gig, and it was so funny because I, I tanked at that, and uh, I went on first, and it was a lot of um, there was a lot of older guys, and somebody took a picture of the audience point of view <laughs> and it's literally a guy who looks like your uncle on his phone and the look of confusion on his face and it just completely encapsulated him just going so what is this like what 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 is she doing <laughs> and he was just like and I was like that image is literally the best reaction shot of an older Pakistani guy trying to work out what the hell is going on uh, why has he been brought to this venue and made to watch some yeah. Gora? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's so interesting that someone, sometimes people can just walk on a stage and just compu- confuse the shit out of people <laughs> in a matter of minutes, you know. And so, so with your comedy, though, it, I mean, as much as I've heard, it's, um, it's very much about life and how you see life and some of your situations. And I know you talk about your children and it's one, there's one joke that you said that really tickled me and I, and I use it now all the time. It's um, yeah, I think there's a gentleman who says, if you, uh, if you carry on like that, you'd be going home in an ambulance. And you said, uh, we do know ambulances don't take you home. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the that, audience- I, I actually, I actually stole that from my sister. My sister actually came up with that because this was many years ago. My my husband and my brother-in-law got into a bit of a an argument and it ended up like one of those chavvy Stenders moments of both me and my sister going, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, Daryl. Um, and the next day me and my sister were laughing about it because I think my husband had said like, you know, I'm going to send you home in an ambulance. Um, and it was my sister just yes, and we were sat the next day having a cup of tea talking about it, like, oh God, what are they like? And my sister was like, Oh, he said he'd send him home in an ambulance, but they don't take you home, do they? And I was like, I'm I'm stealing that from you. It was so good because it's so simple and the audience there, there was silence in the audience and slowly it trickled, it sort of sunk into them, they realised what you said, and then they started you, you said, I'll give you a minute with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so with your jokes, you, you, is that how you find them within general situations with your family and observations? Well, it's weird. So basically you spend like the first few years. So I've been doing comedy for four years and you spend like the first few years kind of like making jokes about your environment. And then when you do your first Edinburgh show, so I did my first Edinburgh hour last year and um, you just put all that material together and just kind of see how it comes together. But since, Right in my second show, I'm probably talking about family a lot less and more kind of like my observations of, I think because there's so many things going on at the moment. Mm. I guess I'm kind of like an old school feminist. So a lot of the stuff I talk about is, I mean, but I talk about feminism from the perspective of like, why won't my husband ever wipe a surface? But so it's kind of like old school rants, which I think a lot of women who are married, they always get on board with. Um, but I wanted to kind of go back. So with my newer stuff, I'm kind of looking at, you know, going back and looking at, you know, growing up in the 90s and and that kind of culture of growing up in the 90s and what that meant. And But, yeah, I think up, up until I started writing my new show, I was definitely looking a lot at family because it's funny. Yeah, family. It's funny. Like, you know what it's like when you're yeah. British born, yeah. but you've got, you know, parents who are still very much living in the in the yeah. old country and they're just kind of like clashing with the environment around them and, yeah. you, and you're just their little interpreter aren't you between yeah. the two worlds yeah yeah i remember i don't know in your house back back in the 80s and 90s we would always have like um uh, you know the hallway carpet would always be covered with like a plastic yeah. and but the rest of the carpet wasn't it was just the hallway so when we lifted it out, when we changed carpets after all them years, that will be pristine. The hallway carpet was pristine, yeah, but, but the everything rest else like is shit. just ingrained. Yeah, yeah. And Did, I don't know. Is it the same in India where they, like, shoes are really disrespectful as well? Wearing shoes in the house. Well, just shoes in general. Like even you know, like now I've got a porch where the shoes are kept in the porch. 
But my dad really loses his mind about it. He's like so disrespectful that the first thing that your yeah. guests are seeing when they come to the house is your porch and your shoes. And I'm just like, well, where, do, where do you keep it? And then I started to think, when we're in Lebanon, where are the shoes? <laughs> and I realised there's kind of like a cupboard. Like you go into one of the flats, you go in, guests would never be asked to remove their shoes because guests are God. And, but you'd have to come in, but the shoes go in that cupboard. And so the shoes are hidden. So the fact that you've got a porch with a shoe rack it's like literally to my dad like it's the equivalent of me standing in a portrait just giving flicking the bird to everyone who yeah. comes and knocks on it's the door like, yeah. that's funny because in our house there is a little cupboard with shoes in can you hear me oh it just went out there yeah i was saying in our house in the hallway there is a little cupboard full of shoes yeah it's got to be a cupboard you've got yeah. to have closed doors closed see doors. i've got a shoe rack ah. There you go. You need to up, up your game. You need a little cupboard, yeah. don't you? I know. <laughs> my, uh, my husband, he finds it really funny because he's like, do you realise how much of your discussion with your dad is always about shoe storage? Like, I've never met <laughs> an elderly man who's <laughs> so obsessed with how you store your shoes. Um, and even, like, yeah, it... it, it it is mental. He's just like essentially, but then obviously, like in Middle East, if someone like if you know if, if somebody's like a hated figure, then people go and throw their shoes at him. So That's they right. are seen as like a big old sign of disrespect. Yeah. There's actually a guy. Do you remember the guy who threw the shoe at uh, George Bush? And mm -hmm. um, every time someone puts that video on, this is what I read that he always jumps onto Twitter, and he goes, "That was me," and he's <laughs> he's kind of proud of himself still, you know. So every time that video is put on, anyone shares that video, he, he'll, the, the, literally that man will jump on the one who threw the shoe and yeah. say, that was me. <laughs> well, I guess the shoe was always a bit of a scary. It was the slipper. You'd always get whacked with the slipper. I remember that. My dad used to give us a whack with the slipper, which yeah. is mental. Because you think about that now. I don't know if you would whack your kids with your slippers, but A, I don't really wear slippers, but the slippers I wear now are kind of like those like, fluffy little boot things yeah so even if i did take that out take that off and bash my kid with it it's going to do minimum impact i might as well just just smack him but yeah he would always it would, you, he would always take off his slipper and then you've got to walk and then he'd be like you come here so you'll walk to him <laughs> to receive your bashing from the slipper it's like <laughs> you have to put <laughs> why did i go yeah, you come here and we do it don't we yeah. we do walk over there we well, had especially like because he mixes his Arabic and English quite a lot, but he um so in Arabic there's an expression which is like um so in Eng in, in English we would say like go f yourself, wouldn't we? If you're getting into an argument, we'd be like go f yourself. But in Arabic, and Arabic has really graphic swear words, but they have um, I think it's like it will be um come here to F yourself. But my dad, when he was, he was speaking English, this was in Egypt and he got into a fight, but he'd completely confused his English and his Arabic. So he's arguing with this guy. And then he said to the guy, you need to go over there. And the guy looked to where he was pointing and went, and then when you're over there and the guy was like, yeah, it was like, that's when you F yourself. And we were like, oh God, this guy. It's like, how dare you? There was just this little pause in conversation. The guy was like, I've got to go where? What? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that then translated in a joke in our family that we would then go, right, you're going to go home, you're going to have a shower, eat dinner with your wife, you're going to watch TV, you're going to blah, 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 have a bath, do the crossword, and then you're going to F yourself. <laughs> I'm just getting really annoyed, but it was quite funny. Yeah, you're giving them little directions first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go, but obviously, yeah. if you're having a heated row with someone and then you suddenly go, right, you go over there, it suddenly just takes away all the anger because they're like, well, why? What's over there? What's I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that on my wife. Cause that will just that will completely blast her head. She'd be like, "Hey, hey, could you?" <laughs> she needs to write down instructions and notes. You see, yeah. so she'll be writing it down on a post-it. Left where? Yeah. Left and then what? <laughs> it's really <laughs> perfect. <laughs> He's a genius. It still makes me laugh because the guy was just like, "Where? What? What's going on?" <laughs> you go over there. When you're over there, then you have yourself. Yeah, that should be the film. That's perfect. He's a genius. No, no. That's a genius. So, I mean, for you, for you, for yourself, like you're saying, you know, you pick up these stories about your, uh, your family, but you're saying for your new writing uh, and for comics, is it, did I have to kind of have like a raw 
idea and then they kind of smooth it over by doing live shows and testing it out and see if yeah. it works and and then kind of refine it is that and obviously you can't do that at the moment and no although i've been doing a lot of online stuff yeah so i've been doing um <laughs> I've been doing a lot of online stuff, including so normally like stuff that's quite well paid are like corporate gigs, obviously where companies employ comedians for entertainment, um, which me and Sook did one um, for Snapchat um, that was really good fun. But um, uh, again, you could see like some of the guys were like, oh, God, we've got all these ethnic women, but it, it ended up a really good, good night. We, we had a really good time, yeah. but, um, so corporate gigs, but I've been getting booked for those, but doing them online. <laughs> and, um, obviously if like your boss is like, you've got to log in at three o'clock for this corporate gig. Um, and you're at home, the amount of people that will log on, mute it. And you're just sat there doing your jokes and they're just getting on with cooking the dinner or doing the hoovering. And you're just like, this is soul destroying. I mean, I'm getting paid for it. So fine. But it is, it's just so different from, from doing it oh, in yeah. a live environment. Cause there's no, there's no feedback as well. Right. So how are you going to. No. And that's why like with some of the online stuff, it's really important that some people are prepared to like be unmuted and, and, but then again, it's like you sat by yourself at home. It's hard to get that kind of, laughter going it's all right you know it's all right but normally yeah it's all trial and testing on stage and it isn't until you sit on stage yeah yeah and then you know you how know it's going to it go works or not yeah i mean it's such a tough time for you guys you know and there, there doesn't seem to be kind of the light at the end of the tunnel at the moment i can't see uh, no i mean i don't know when it's going to change you know we're just about I mean, it could get I think to a we'll point. probably go into we'll go into another um, lockdown, don't you think? I think so. Maybe uh, potentially in the winter time, uh, mm. I could see that happening. And you know, there's there's people out and about now. You know, congregating. And I, I live in Yorkshire now. I'm actually from the south as well, but I live in Yorkshire. And Leeds have just gone to the Premiership, so Leeds City Centre was packed. Obviously, people were <sighs> celebrating. So give it two weeks. We'll be in lockdown and. Uh, yeah, but then there wasn't um, a peak after all the protests. No, no. Which I, unless which was very interesting because when the protests were happening, you had all sort of. I don't want to be prejudiced, but you know, sort of the middle class. Oh, look what they're doing! It's going to be another peak, and you know they're protesting. But then when these football teams have been winning, there's not a peep out of them. You know, well, you know. Oh yeah. You know so. Yeah, uh, that's so true. But it was a really confusing time. It was, and then, and I think all these things start to create more divide because it's kind of like, well, look at all these protests that are happening, um, and then the government saying, "Well, you know, you should be social distancing." So it was just dividing people more and more. And I feel like we're just becoming like this lockdown has encouraged like division, like no other. People are yeah. getting really really divided and yeah. we're losing a real sense of like community and i don't know it's a real shame you, it is you, a real shame i feel I, like the pandemic has set us back a long has, way. But do, do, do you remember us at the beginning when of the lockdown the first couple of weeks everyone was kind of nice to each other even online you yeah. know we're kind of in this together we're gonna the war spirit <laughs> it was all the clapping you're the clapping you know uh clapping for everything you know and uh see your neighbor and you say well done you yeah. know you're getting your bins yeah. uh, but then after two weeks everyone reverted back to being assholes again <laughs> but, but enough it's funny, now. isn't it yeah yeah where's come. that community spirit gone yeah you know two weeks is about the maximum we could do as human well, it's beings because everyone keeps on saying oh it's like a war and i'm like but it's not it's like a war but without a war isn't it it's yeah. like the, oh it's like the war and it's like well it isn't because like we're, we're not having to send young boys off. We're not having bombs. Um, we're not having like short. I mean, it did make me like that we we're all supposed to panic by. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, not remember? really sure what we needed toilet all the toilet rolls, roll for in the end. Toilet rolls, pasta. It's toilet rolls and pasta. yeah. I'm not really sure about the whole toilet roll thing because, I mean, I was like, as far as I know, Corona doesn't give you no permanent diarrhea no so I, was like, I don't really know what the whole toilet roll thing was yeah um but and, and, yeah I'm, i mean if toilet roll and taglatelli i mean pasta's got quite a lot of fiber in as well so yeah you're kind of 
I don't know if you're thinking it's through really, but that was a strange one. And then people have now relaxed a bit, obviously, and it's get it's getting to normal, uh, as we can say. But there was that, you know, we're in the war, we're in the war. But really, all we had to do was stay at home and watch Netflix. Yeah, it's not quite the same. It wasn't, you know, we're not worried not about, you know, being bombed or anything yeah. like that. But uh, I think somebody in Syria or Serbia would just be like, yeah, this really isn't, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. really, so, you know, <laughs> you can't classify this as a war. Oh my God, my war time is really hard. I had yeah. to watch the entire series of Tiger King yeah. whilst not working. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I didn't have a break. Sitting on a throne I didn't have a break, of I didn't have a break between them. Uh, but can you imagine sitting down with someone in, in, in a cafe, you know, someone who is from Syria and uh, in a real war and you're sharing war stories with them? You know, um, they would just be looking at you thinking, well, you, you just had to stay at home. You know, yeah. we can just it's about hard. put our, uh, heads on our beds at night without worrying about what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a strange one, and and you're right. I think there could be a, another peak on its way, which is going to be uh, it's going to be terrible for a number of reasons, but obviously for your comedy as well. You know, do do you kind of sometimes worry and think? I mean, you told me about your corporate online gigs, which um, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is that if you don't know, you don't know. Mm. There's nothing you can do. And I think you'll just stand the test of time. And I think, you know, if live work comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It'll just be, you know, the TV names that are cracking on. And mm. so be it, really. There's not a huge amount one can do. But I'm going to definitely keep doing stuff online. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got work there and and it will keep it will keep you know it'll keep coming because people you know want stuff there is you know there's a need for stuff out there and i think as long as you've got the content and you've got the audience you can keep producing yeah. stuff yeah yeah so that's kind of your push now to try and do more things online i'll tell you what esther talking to you now obviously we've just met but you know where i could see you i could see you like a mock of the week you know one of them kind of shows tell mock the week that <laughs> <laughs> You know them kind of <laughs> panel shows? That's kind of the comedian, yeah. group, isn't it? You've got stand-up, you've got your festivals, and then you've got these panel shows, and that yeah. sort of kind of seems to be the route, you know, unless you get then you get your own your own show. Yeah. But I can see you on a panel. You know, you've got this dry sense of humour, and, you know, um, <laughs> it'll work with, like, current events and current affairs. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I'm going to sort it out. I'll sort it out. All right, you sort that out. I give them a ring. I tell them to come around. I hide my shoes in my cupboard, and they can come around. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even online, it's very difficult, right, to build a presence because there's so much online. You know, it's it's. Yeah, there is a lot online. I think you've just got. To, yeah, yeah, there is a lot online. But you know, there are people that are doing it, and there are people that are doing it really well. And I think you know, if you've got if you've got something to say and, and you can be funny with it. And it's kind of, it's a lot more raw as well. So, you know, you can be a lot more raw. It's less scripted and constructed. So a lot of people enjoy that. So I think there are, you know, there are different avenues, but people will always find a way, won't they? Yeah. They'll always find a way. Yeah. At the end of the day, as much as live social things, I mean, even during lockdown, people are still finding ways to, you know, socialise and, and yeah. mix with friends, whether it was online or you know socially distanced gatherings or whatever but people will find a way because people want to see other people and they mm. want to laugh and they want to be entertained so mm. you can't take away really the fundamentals of of what being a human is and that is why i'm such a guru you see yeah that's my words of wisdom yeah that's fantastic <laughs> it's lovely we could just cut that little portion out and say you know, i know uh, put a... it on my statue and then yeah. people can throw shoes at it yeah <laughs> And the cupboard. Out the cupboard. Well, get the shoes out the cupboard, bring them down. I know. <laughs> but, you know, I've just recently gone back on Twitter, actually, as well, uh, because I lost my other account. I've got two accounts, but I don't know. Did like... you lose it because you were putting offensive things on it? Did you do a Wiley? No. No. <laughs> Good old Wiley. <laughs> it's mental. He, he said certain comments. Um, now we mentioned Wiley. Let's uh, dig into them. <laughs> In 2000, I think it was 2004 or five, he said about, um, he's talking about Indians. He goes, I'm going to knock that turban off your head. And he's talking about curries and literally he's been racist. Who was that? Though? I remember that. Who was that he was talking about? I think. <sighs> Do you know, I really remember that. 
Yeah, he's talking about. Some... I don't think actually. Do I remember? I I remember the comment. I didn't know it was Wiley. Yeah, it was Wiley. I can't remember who it was. He was on the. It beat. was about. I remember that he said about knocking a turban off. Yeah, not and curry or something. You go, I'll, throw, I'll throw Bombay potatoes at you or something. Bom- oh yeah, who was that at? Um, I'm gonna Google Jay, it. Was it Jay Sean or something? I can't remember. Oh God, Jay Sean is Jay Sean still? He's still singing. He's still just releasing. Is he? Yeah. I think I used to have a massive um, crush on him. Um, yeah, you're right. It is. I think it was Jay Sean. Yeah. So he's just a, basically. I think what Wiley does is he gets into an argument with somebody and then he just goes on a rant of racist abuse at the person that he's angry at. So it seems to me that he got uh, he had a falling out maybe with his manager who's Jewish. Yeah. Right. And so just went on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tirade of abuse against Jews and uh yeah you're right he's done it before he's just gone and he should have been taken off um well I guess Twitter just wants people to it's just clickbait for them isn't it yeah it is generates and this was the (sighs) this was a point I was making about Twitter because I hadn't been on there for such a long time no it wasn't for any offensive remarks and uh it was I couldn't remember my password and then uh, I I emailed Twitter and said I can't remember my password and they they said oh do you remember any of your past passwords? And I gave them a couple and they were all wrong. And uh, say, sorry, we can't help you. So I, I opened a new account up anyway. But I think the only people that should be on Twitter is are comedians. Um, because it, the, the, re- the rest of the people on there, it's just pure arguments. And I mean, how can you genuinely... It's a hellhole, Twitter. It's a hell- I put something like, um, I put something that was like pro the NHS and just like you know really proud of the nhs and then this person was like f you you go there come over here uh, no he was like um f you uh, stop um glamorizing the nhs and and i was like huh? it's insane that me saying thanks to the nhs or whatever i said i can't even remember has angered like who's scrolling through twitter and go, getting so mad and then it's a bit like um, I did um, an, an advert for Nationwide. So I did my stand up on um, a Nationwide advert. And bear in mind that Nationwide is a bank. It's a national advert. It was going on. I think my advert was going on like after um, The Voice. So it's a family audience. And I had to do, and they were like, you know, write some some jokes that have no swearing in it and no references to any politics and no insults to any groups and blah, 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 blah. So you have to write, you know, really family-friendly, kid-friendly jokes. So I just made a joke about um, the tooth fairy. And bear in mind, you write the jokes in like two days, you record it, and then they decide which joke they like, and then you go and do it in front of a live audience. But it's not like your finest way. It's not like you're out there going, this is this is the most, you know, oh, this is my strongest piece of writing. This is, this is the writing. Because obviously the stuff that I want to talk about, I want to rant on stage, and obviously it wouldn't be very, you know, with all the swearing and stuff, it wouldn't be very PC, but... So I did this advert and it was a joke about, cause, and which is true, I was away gigging when my daughter lost her first tooth and um, my husband rang, I rang the next day and I was like, oh, did the tooth fairy come? My daughter was like, yeah, he left five pounds. I was like, what? And <laughs> I was like, can I speak to dad? And my husband comes on the phone, I'm like, are you mental? And he was like, that's all I had, that's all I had. And I was like, but she's going to go and tell her mates now. We're going to come across to other people. Like, we're just literally there. Like, make it rain, baby. There you go. (laughs) And I was like, not only that, parents are going to be really livid because then their kids are going to expect a fiver each time. I was like, she's got 30 teeth. (laughs) (laughs) She's going to be rolling in cash. She's going to have more cash than, than we've got. So I wrote a joke about that. Anyway, it went out. And when I saw the advert, I was like, oh, it's fine. It's sweet. It's, you know, it's just about the tooth fairy. And um, the amount of abuse. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, who the hell is watching an advert? And I understand when you hear adverts again and again and again, they do get annoying. But even when I've been really annoyed by like the Halifax man over and over and over again, there is n- never in a million years would I think to take to Twitter or find him on YouTube and just be like, Rah. Yeah. Um, but I just had a lot of um, very angry blokes going 
this is just PC, <laughs> PC woman, can't be funny. And I'm like, of course it's PC. It's a nationwide sure. advert. What are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> me too you're like oh but I don't understand he's they're the shagging the missus it's, yeah. like, it's nationwide what are you talking about it's yeah, a family what, advert what kind, of, what kind of joke did they think they would want on there but I don't, I don't get... know and it, it seemed like a lot of them a lot of the um, adverts are all getting a lot of hate um, which is fine at the end of the day it's you know it's money that covered me for not working for a few months so I don't care you know laughing on my way to the bank but I was like mm. I, I, it, it, I mean, I don't read the comments, but it was, you know, lovely, lovely friends who are like, oh, have you seen what this person's written? But I was just like, it, it amazes me. Yeah, it amazes yeah. me who I, takes to Twitter. I've and, never in my whole life been watching any advert or any program even and, and, and just thought to my wife, you know, pass me my phone and, and getting on Twitter and just ranting. About, I just, it's just beyond me. I don't know why. People... If somebody said something really offensive, I might say something, I, I, you know, like I made a little video about Tommy Robinson emigrating to Spain. Cause I think that's quite funny. Oh, but yeah, like, yeah. I saw that, yeah, I did see that. I know, <laughs> but like I live in, um, I live in Woodford, which is over in East London slash yeah. Essex. So we get a lot of the Towie lot. And like, it's like some of the times when like girls from Towie have opened boutiques and had bricks through the window or they've been attacked in local nightclubs. And I'm like, yeah, isn't jealousy horrible? Yeah. Isn't it horrible? Yeah. Like I don't watch Towie and I've not got a massive, I mean, I used to when I was young, but I've got not got a massive amount of interest in Towie or, and I don't even know who half these people are, but who, what make, what makes you so bitter that you're going to go and, you know, smash up their business or attack people. It's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Ever? don't get me started because I won't stop. No, no. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you're, we haven't got all day, have we? Sounds like I'm really scared now. <laughs> we, could, we could do another one in a, in a few weeks, just pure rants. For, uh, <laughs> that's one. what my stand-up is, just me ranting, that most terrifying that, woman you've ever yeah, come across. That's what I mean. That's why I think you'd be great on them panel shows because that's kind of what it is, right? They want your views on current events and what the news and uh yeah i think you'd be great on that but uh yeah it's that usually on my show towards the end i ask people so you know what's your future plans and i think we've beaten that to death haven't we you don't know yeah i think uh, what's my future plans i don't know <laughs> get the old tarot cards out and have a look yeah but um, no idea what my future plans are but you're continuing to write uh, continuing to write and i'll still do comedy they can't take that away from me. Yeah. Um, I did get really low at one point. I thought, maybe I'll just have another baby. And then my husband like <laughs> started packing his bags. I was like, oh, no, won't do that then. <laughs> oh, yeah, come back. <laughs> He's like, we can't have another baby just because you're bored. Yeah, you can't have a bored. I'm sure some people do, though, don't they? Like, like in, in, they... Well, yeah. yeah. It's quite knackering, though. Yeah. As you know. You've got to be really bored for that, you know. To, uh, yeah, you've got to be really bored. I mean, you miss them. You miss them when they're little babies, don't you? You're like, but um, a friend of mine turned up and they had like their tiny little baby and I thought, oh my God, it's so sweet. And then you just saw how broken the dad was and just like the bags down here. And I was like, oh yeah, no, it is either, yeah. really tiring. So it's like my youngest is now five. So she's getting... Same. To, it's but. But I remember when I used to like them when they were about like one and a half, 18 months, two years. That's a kind of cute age in you know, the walking around. Yeah. And they don't sort of answer back. And, uh, yeah, but even then, it's different things. Like when they're newborn, they're very mobile. So you could go to the family or whatever and you can sit and they'll just sleep throughout the day, won't they? But it's hard because you're up every few hours. But when they're that 15 month, 18 month age, that's when if you ever try and go and eat at a restaurant, you just have to take it in turns to walk them up and down the restaurant. Oh, and yeah. I forget, you forget that phase yeah, where you're just yeah. like, oh yeah, we could never sit and have a coffee. We could never sit at anyone's house. We have to just literally yeah. take it in turns. God, that reminds, and that's really, I remember that's really my, back break. my kids, once they've eaten, because they used to eat really quickly, whatever they had, and they go, can we stand up now, get off the chairs? And I'd be like, yeah. And they'll walk off, wouldn't they? And just stand on another table staring at the people eating. <laughs> And I used to do that a lot. Okay. I used to sort of drag them out. I go, don't stare at people when they're eating and stand in there. They are very honest kids, aren't they? You'll just be on a train or something. They'll just stare at the person opposite and go, why has that man got such a weird face? And you're like, oh, God, can you just Yeah. Oh, that stop. is weird, actually. You're right. You're right. <laughs> very observant. 
but, but he's got are. a very abnormal face. Well, it's because he doesn't look normal like mum, all right? Mum looks normal, okay? Nope. Not everyone's as lucky as I am to just be normal. We've definitely determined you have a, you're normal. <laughs> I'm really not normal. <laughs> but, <laughs> they actually hit the nail on the head the first time. Yeah. <laughs> so, look, we're coming towards the end. Um, is there a place where people can sort of catch up with your work, your social media sort of tags and handles? Yeah, please follow me on either Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Um, I do a weekly show on jokepit.com, which is Pictionary with Comedians, and we get different comedians to come and compete uh, doing Pictionary, which is a lot of fun. Um, and, yeah, just like our work basically keep supporting live comedy please and support yeah definitely definitely i I would say to everyone support you know uh support the comedians out there you know they're struggling at the moment they genuinely are you know and it's not about watching them super mega famous comedians on tv and you know they well they'll always be all right exactly you know because they're in but it's us club comics the the comedians that made our money through club work yeah you know we're essentially out of work now yeah so it's a bit of a struggle thousands of but it's all right because uh i'm just going to raid my daughter's tooth fairy box money and uh <laughs> i'm just going to go out and buy myself some diamonds and a white tiger she, she might be saving up for gold teeth <laughs> she might just get a wily do gold? one gold tooth and just become a massive racist <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just make sure uh she chooses her manager wisely yeah yeah <laughs> But on, on, on that lovely note, Wiley, uh, we'll <laughs> God bless him, mate, for whatever he's doing at the moment in, in his life, you know. Um, but it's, it's quite interesting because we like to cancel people now, don't we, online? Yeah. So if anyone does anything wrong, we cancel them. That just literally means we're just going to break them on social media because we don't, yeah. they don't actually go anywhere, do they? They're still around. Yeah. They? But uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't think I, I fully understand the cancel culture because it doesn't really seem to kind of mind you. Well, I don't know. There's arguments for and against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it works personally because what they, they, you're going to break them off online and they might be taken off Twitter maybe, but they'll go on Facebook or YouTube. yeah, they'll be on another one. But, but anyway, look, let, let, let's not get cancelled ourselves. And uh, <laughs> we've we've come to, honestly it's been a fingers real pleasure crossed. yeah fingers crossed honestly it's been a real pleasure speaking to you thank you for coming on and no thank you so much for having me really enjoyed it yeah it's been a great chat and uh, it's cheered me up i like speaking to comedians and my favorite people to be honest and uh, uh, uh this show will be out real soon and uh and uh, yeah thank you esther for coming on and uh have a great day and good luck for the future i hope it all works out and you and hopefully see you soon at some point yeah, definitely. One of the gigs, I'll be there. You know, ah, uh, awesome. Gone and uh, with a mask. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Slipper in hand. <laughs> Soft one. <laughs>